vitamin E is just underappreciated. It's misunderstood. And as important it is, as it is for skin healing, as important as it is for the nervous system, as important as it is for hormone health, we just don't talk a lot about it or we don't understand a lot about it. And partially that's because it's one of the most recent, I think it may be the most recent vitamin that we really knew about. Most vitamins were discovered in the 20s and 30s. Vitamin E didn't really get going until the 1940s. If you're dealing with hormone health issues, if you're a woman, you should know that vitamin E balances out estrogen. Estrogen obviously is super important. It's a critical skin health hormone, but it has a dark side. And vitamin E, as it turns out, can help keep vitamin, uh, help keep estrogen under control. If you're dealing with menopausal issues, vitamin E can be super helpful. If you're de de dealing with PMS or autoimmune diseases, which are estrogenic, tend to be estrogenic. Do you know most, most uh, autoimmune victims are, are women? It's the estrogen component. Vitamin E protects us against excess estrogen or, or poorly broken down estrogen, I should say. So vitamin E is not really important about, it's importance and its relevance to health is not really about how it participates in chemical reactions. It's more about protection. It facilitates healing because it protects the skin. It facilitates skin healing dramatically because it has this protective response or protective ability. Vitamin E for burns, vitamin E for scrapes, cuts. If you pop a zit and you get a big old wealth, vitamin E in high doses can really dramatically speed healing. I mean high doses. And you need 2,000, 3,000 IU of vitamin E to get this effect. That's a lot. Even 400 IU, according to the recommended daily allowance folks, the RDA people, that's a lot. The RDA people want you to think you need 10 or 15, I think, I think it's 14 international units as the minimum or as the recommended daily allowance, baloney. Most studies done on vitamin E for, uh, as far as heart protection and brain protection and nerve protection and skin health involve two to 400 IU of vitamin E. I recommend 400 IU of vitamin E a day. There's a lot more than, you, than the RDA folks recommend and a lot more than you're gonna get from food. Vitamin E is not really a food vitamin. There's not a lot of foods that contain high amounts of the stuff. There's foods that contain it, but not high amounts of it. So vitamin E is about protection. It's a guardian. It's like the secret service of the body. It stands by silently until it's required to protect the body and biochemistry, from, particularly from oxygen. Really, it's an antioxidant. It's a fat antioxidant, much like melatonin. Melatonin and vitamin E kind of work together. That's another thing about vitamin E. It works together with a lot of things. Vitamin E and selenium work together. Always take those two together. And by the way, alpha lipoic acid, which is not an essential nutrient, works together with vitamin E also. And for that matter, vitamin C. Vitamin C, selenium, vitamin E, and alpha lipoic acid are a team. They all protect. They're like a protective team. They protect our fats. And if you're not absorbing your fats, you're going to have a problem absorbing all of those nutrients. Vitamin E has a major role in the nervous system and in brain health. Nerve cell membranes are particularly fatty. So you have Alzheimer's disease. In fact, cognitive function is really one of the, one of the places that vitamin E really shines is improving our ability to cognate, to think, for folks who have dementia. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We've got some lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We'll come back with you and your phone calls and more good health information on The Bright Side right after this. We are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. From the Journal, uh, the Journal of Investigative Dermatology, 1991 article, stratum corneum lipids serve as bound water modulator, meaning fats in the skin keep your skin moist and soft and hydrated. Stratum corneum, that's the surface of the skin. Most of you guys know that. The hard, rough surface, the hard, resilient surface. Shouldn't be rough, but resilient. Keeps water out. Stratum corneum lipids, fats, have been found to be an important determinant involved in the water holding function. That means you can drink all the water you want, folks, but if your fats are off, if you're not getting your essential fatty acids, if you're not absorbing your essential fatty acids and your fatty vitamins, you are going to have dry skin. You can use all the moisturizer you want, and you can drink all the water you want. It's not going to make a difference if you're not processing fats. On the other hand, if you've got dry skin, you've got a fat problem, Use your ultimate EFAs. Make sure you take them with food. 
throw in your fatty vitamins, especially vitamin A, by the way. Super important for skin moisturization. And make sure you're absorbing the whole thing using your digestive enzymes, your ultimate enzymes. And don't forget probiotics. Good bacteria are very, very important for fat processing. That's really one of the underappreciated roles of the microbiome, the universe of bacteria that live in our gut, is their role in helping us process fats and fatty hormones. Women who have estrogen problems, think probiotics. Think the microbiome in addition to your fatty nutrients. All right, tomorrow we'll continue talking about vitamin E. We'll talk about vitamin E and Alzheimer's disease, vitamin E and Parkinson's disease, vitamin E and anti-aging. We'll be talking about vitamin E and diabetes, vitamin E is protective against metabolic syndrome, which is a a high blood pressure and heart disease and, and brain issues that are associated with diabetes. Vitamin E also has an interesting role to play when it comes to the health of the lymphatic system. You know, the lymph processes fats in a way. The lymph is our, our uh, circulatory system for fats and fatty vitamins. When we get sick or when we get older or when we're toxic and our lymph fatics are all clogged up, we're not going to get our fats. That's another way that you can become fat deficient or EFA deficient or fatty vitamin deficient is if you've got lymphatic congestion. That's why a rebounder can be so helpful. There's a good reason why cancer and, uh, and clogged lymph go hand in hand, especially breast cancer, which is lymph- has lymphatic involvement. Man, uh, (laughs) there's nothing in the body when it comes to protecting yourself from cancer and and other diseases, especially cancer, though, than keeping your lymph moving. Oh, my God. This is probably the single most underappreciated system in the body, the lymphatic system, and it's our fat delivery system in addition to helping the body process toxins. Okay. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Santa Cruz and say hi to Steve. What's going on, man? How you doing, Steve? Good morning, Ben. I hope you had a nice weekend. I was your last call on Friday. About okay, I recognize your voice. Remind me what we were talking about. Myeloma, blood cancer. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, apparently, it's a somewhat rare thing. Before we get started, can I say that I really enjoy your explanations? They're really fantastic in your in your oh. energy and so on. Have you oh. ever thought of writing a book? I've been writing a book for years, man, and I write, but writing a book is like a whole process, and I've oh, been writing yeah. one for a right. while. So I've thought of it, but it's, it's, it's if there's a big well, difference between take... thinking of something and doing it, as you probably know. Um, okay, yeah. so myeloma, you want to talk about that? Yes, sir. Is it multiple myeloma, did they say? Yes, yes, that's okay. correct. Okay, so basically it's a bone marrow problem. The bone marrow is some of the most active, uh, active uh, tissue in the body. And so it makes sense that cancers would show up there. Cancers, cancer and, and fast dividing cells obviously go hand in hand. So myeloma, is it for you, sir? I'm sorry? Is it for you? No, it's for a friend of mine. Okay, because of the nature of myeloma and the bone marrow and how fast cells divide, they'll tell you that it's uncurable, that they can only treat it. And they'll give you, guess what, steroids and chemo and and drugs that suppress the immune system. That's basically how they treat myeloma. But with all cancers, what you're dealing with, and this is so important, actually, I'm writing an article on it right now, cancer is basically not cancer of the organ, but it's cancer of the cells. And this understanding, this distinction is really important if we're going to understand health in general, but specific cancer. Because we always talk about lung cancer. We always talk about prostate cancer or, or blood cancers like multiple myeloma, kidney cancer, et cetera. We always refer to the organ. But the problem's not in the organ until it's too late. The problem is at the cell level, percolating along until it hits the organ. So to address cancer, the best way to do it is to prevent it, but if you want to address it, you got to work on the cell, and that means reducing stresses on the cell, and there's three major ones, three major stresses. It's really a dramatic version of all degenerative diseases, which are caused by stresses on the cell. So you're dealing with a deficiency in nutrients, you're dealing with a, a hypoxia or deficiency in oxygen, and you're dealing with toxicity, and that's it. And this idea of all the different types of cancer, hundreds of different types of cancer, and now doctors tell you they're all different diseases and it's genetics and they gotta do fancy schmancy tests and use stem cells and chemotherapy, et cetera. The only reason we gotta do these ridiculous treatments, by the way, chemotherapy is literally killing your body, literally, not figuratively. Uh, the reason we, fall, we, we feel like we don't have any other choice is because we're treating cancer at the organ level, not at the cell level. 
Now, I want to be very clear here, you guys, and Steve, listen. Cancers remit. Do you know this? They, that's happened for, for eons. We've seen cancer spontaneously stop. So if the body can handle cancer in some people, it can handle it in anybody. The body is capable of dealing with it, but we have to support it on all turns. Killing cancer is not the answer because if the soil is still dirty, the next fruit or the next, the next plant that comes out of the soil is going to be sick. So yeah, if you have an emergency, I, you got to use chemo or radiation or whatever. You, you got to do what you have to do. But if you want to work on it truly, at the same time that you're doing your chemo and the same time you're doing your, you know, your steroids or your surgery, make sure you're pounding the body with nutrients, particularly the, the protecting nutrients like vitamin E and selenium and vitamin C. Magnesium is especially important. You can get something called a Myers cocktail, which is a combination of B vitamins and vitamin C and a magnesium that they'll stick right in your blood. And this is the way to do it, by the way, is put it right in the blood. If, if you have cancer, again, by the time you see the cancer, this, this has been a cell disease for a long time. You just didn't notice it. So you got to take drastic measures, and I'd be doing IV nutrition. Then you got to make sure you're oxygenating, and that means deep breathing and moving the body, especially the lymph, but also hyperbaric oxygen. Well, many hospitals have these hyperbaric oxygen chambers that you can sit into where they drive oxygen in. And when you're doing that, you got to make sure that you're using antioxidants too because oxygen has this dual nature. It has a dark side. So making sure you're using antioxidants, the combination of uh, pounding the nutrition in, the, the Mighty 90, obviously that goes without saying, and... Um, and even IV nutrition, IV glutathione, by the way, really important. Any glutathione is important. You'll get glutathione, as we were talking, I think last week we talked to somebody about this, glutamine, glycine, and cysteine. And by the way, they all work together with selenium. Selenium, gl uh, glutamine, cysteine in the form of NAC or NAC, and the amino acid glycine, which you'll find in bone soup, and whey protein. Those can be helpful, too. And then there's the whole toxicity element, and that's very, very important, especially if you're being treated for cancer. So hang tight, Steve. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Eight... 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Steve in Santa Cruz about myeloma, which is a blood cancer, cancer of the immune system, cancer of immune cells. Immune cells are dividing really rapidly, super duper rapidly, faster than any other cells probably in the body. And it makes sense that this is one of the places where cancer would occur. Cancer typically will occur, or, or often occurs, I should say, in cells that are dividing rapidly anyway. But the thing about cancer, Steve, as I was saying before we went to the break, is it's not so much a different disease as it is an extreme disease. It's not different than any other, if you think about it from the cell level, and that's how we have to think about it if we're going to get our power back from the specialists. Specialists are not there for us. They're there for them. We don't need specialists because there's no special diseases. Only when you look at it at the organ level, at the tissue level, which is you know, far down the road, by that time, you know, the cow's out of the barn. Only if you look at it that way, you, the specialist comes to play, and that's why they never help anybody. So from the cell level, you're dealing with a stressed out cell. Nutrition is key. All the nutrients we talked about before we went to the break, vitamin C, extra important. I didn't say that, but it is. Zinc also is a very important mineral for the immune system and for cell health. Essential fatty acids, all your fatty vitamins are important. EFAs particularly. Remember, the outside part of a cell is fatty. And, when, and cancer, by the way, is largely a membrane issue. In many ways, it's the cell membrane, the oil part of the cell, the fatty layer of the cell that breaks down. Cells talk to each other at the membrane level, and they'll say, hey, you know, there's plenty of us. Stop growing. The cells on the top will sell this, tell the cells on the bottom to stop growing by communicating to each other. So cancer is a, a communication issue. A cancer cell is a sociopathic cell. It's not listening. It, it's only thinking of itself. It's only thinking of its own survival. That's why it's so important to calm the cell down with nutrition. Oxygen does the same thing. And then the third element is detoxification making sure that you're not putting the toxins in. That goes without saying, but you know, when, you're on, when you have cancer, many times they give you toxins. So you gotta minimize your, your, uh, the input of toxicity, just which you absolutely have to if you're doing chemo. Sugar is a toxin. 
Other drugs are toxins. The less you eat, by the way, the better off you are. That will have a, an effect on slowing things down. Li 